At a joint meeting of the DBW Subcommittee Town Council meeting Monday, July 29th, 2024, 6 p.m. Veterans Meeting Room. Note, the items listed which may be discussed at the meeting are those reasonably anticipated by the chair. Not all items listed may, in fact, be discussed, and other items not listed may also be brought up for discussion to the extent permitted by law. Uh, call to order. Councilor Daniels? Present. Councilor Rivas? Absent. And the citizen members aren't appointed yet. Councilor Shannon. Okay, yeah, sitting, put in. That, sitting in. All right, do you see the minutes of the EBW? I'll accept the motion to accept them as presented. I'll move to accept them as presented. Okay. I'll second that. So all in favor? Voted. Number four, review and discuss the reappointment of William Cody to the Department of Public Works Subcommittee for, for a one-year term effective immediately through June 30th, 2025. State that it's a good standing. Motion to recommend the town council for approval. So moved. Second. In discussion, all in favor? Review and discuss the reappointment of Stephen Lazo to the Department of Public Works Subcommittee for a one-year term effective immediately through June 30th, 2025. State that it's in good standing. Motion to recommend the town council for approval. So moved. Second. In discussion. All in favor? Number six, review and discuss the FY25 treated sodium chloride road salt contract with lead salt with contracted price of $93.70 per ton pursuant to the existing Oxford Cooperative bid and allow the town manager to sign all area paperwork. Intend a motion to the town council for approval. So moved. Second. Discussion. Town manager. Thank you. Through you. So Rich had sent us the information, as you're aware, we're in a cooperative purchasing agreement with um, Oxford and other surrounding towns. This price is below the uh, state contract of $95 per ton. and is less than what we paid last year when we were in the same um, cooperative. Right. Anything else, Rich? Rich, you got anything? I don't really have anything. I, uh, as the town manager stated, so this is the same cooperative that we've been uh, actively involved with for a few years now. Um, the price has gone down this year for the cooperative, but still under state bid price. Uh, so this is this will be for our treated road salt, and we will be forthcoming within the next month with a, another uh, contract for non-treated salt. Anything from the committee? All those in favor? So voted. <clears throat> review and discuss the award of number seven. Review and discuss the award of project paid 2024 resurfacing of various streets and town properties to PJ Albert Paving and Excavating of Richburg, Massachusetts, at the amount of $985,294. Allow the town manager to sign away paperwork and a motion to recommend the town council for approval. So moved. Second. Discussion, town manager. Thank you. As you're aware, we had done the first uh, bid that we had to uh, um, disqualify the bids and rebid the project because of a bid protest. So uh, Rich went back out with specific streets at, um, as well as the uh, police department uh, parking lot, which would be paid uh, separate than the chapter 90, as well as some water um, department areas um, as well. So. Um, this was the low bid, uh, Rich, the sheet is in uh, the packet. So it was very competitive. There was only a short dollar amount difference between uh, Breaker Stone and PJ Albert. Uh, Rich has evaluated all the bids. They all comply with the mass procurement laws. Our recommendation is to move forward with, um, as recommended, PJ Albert. Rich, anything? I've got nothing unless you have questions. No, I just want to thank you for uh when I saw the list, there's more streets than I actually anticipated that were, were done, and so maybe it worked out to the benefit of the town going back out, you know, for rebid. Thank you. Uh, no, I wanted to echo Chairman Chenier's comments there, and I'm just curious, uh, so we don't have to talk about it on Monday night, when is the, are these mostly supposed to happen this year? 
So, uh, uh, Rich will answer that, but we met earlier today. Um, a ritual uh, upon approval that we have a meeting scheduled with them to discuss timing and staging, but I'll let him elaborate. So we set the contract date for this project to uh, finalize by June 30th, so this, this fiscal year. So we expect hopefully uh, upon award to get something going for this fall and then whatever uh, residual that doesn't get completed will be done this spring. I, I think I read something about 120 days they have to start or something. I believe that's what we're talking something about. in the contract. Yeah, but that yeah. always can change. Some, anyway. some of the work will be greater than others. Some of the streets yeah. will just be, you know, completely removed, regrade, and and uh, repave, and then, you know, the, the other ones. Uh, some of them have more drainage stuff. There could be a couple of issues. It's all included in the contract. Repair yeah. any drainage or whatever. So Great. it's not going to be a huge, you know, undertaking like South Street, and West Street. But it'll be, you know, mill, re, you know, fix anything, any structures or whatever, adjust as necessary, and then repay. Great. Anything else on the call? Seeing none. <coughs> All those in favor? So voted. I may review and discuss <coughs> award of project gatehouse roof replacement to CK Roofing of Hudson Mass in the amount of eighty-five thousand dollars <coughs> to be paid using capital project account number four two zero 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 zero. Dash five three zero 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 dash six four eight nine seven gatehouse loop and siding and allow time in to sign all related paperwork and take motion to recommend town council for approval. So moved. Second. Discussion, town manager. Thank you. Um, as noted in the uh, replacement, there are three gatehouses that the watershed, the water department has that they were seeking quotes uh, with money that they had allocated for this. Uh, the prices were, when I reviewed this with Rich, the prices were uh, quite the, the uh, spread, but uh, in reviewing it, he had met with Steve and they were very confident that the scope of work that was um, bid out, uh, that the company is reputable, um, and that uh, Steve and Rich would have a oversight over it to make sure that it's all compliant. Uh, so we recommend going forward with um, the recommended uh, party for the uh, CNK. Steve, Steve or Rich? Anything? It's okay. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chair. Through you, why such a variation of the bid? I brought that concern with the low vendor, the low bidder, mm -hmm. um, to make sure that they didn't miss something in their bid and that they were going to do the job we were looking for. Um, they submitted a scope of work yep. as well as their asbestos abatement plans. These roofs are asbestos. And they assured me that. Um, They've spec'd out all the materials as we as we laid it out, and they come up with a, a work plan, one that was creative, one that I hadn't thought of as far as working over the water. Mm -hmm. um, and at this time, I don't have a reason to suspect they won't do a good job, but they they understand that because they were so low, I'm nervous, and they will be watched. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just to follow up on what uh, Mr. Gregoire stated, uh, we met, we spoke, I voiced my concern, he had the same concern reached out to the vendor, explained our concern, you know, it's asbestos, we want to make sure that you have the proper remediation, proper, you're following the scope to the, you know, getting the materials from the proper vendor, doing so on and so forth. They've assured us that all of that is, is in place, they've, they've put it on paper. So at this point in time, we have no reason to think that they won't. And uh, mm -hmm. if something happens, something changes when they uh, show up, we'll, Throw them back out as soon as as soon as it all hits. Right. Yeah. Anything from the floor? Seeing none. All in favor? Opposed? None. Have you discussed a petition for repairs to a private way request for surface repairs to Westview Terrace, up to five hundred dollars in the course of Chapter Eight, Section Eight Dash One O Two? So moved. Second. Discussion. Where's Westview Terrace? <laughs> I read right. this up once. <laughs> So this is annually, uh, residents on private ways have the ability to petition and sign a petition for repairs up to a maximum of $500. So this does meet the definition of the right of way improvements. We do have budgeted monies for that. Oh, so Can I ask where Westview Terrace is? Right Michael Trom Trombley's on it. So that's oh, okay. I know where it is. Off of West Street, right? Yeah. 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 Oh, that little. The little road up, up the hill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we had just done West Street and everything. So that's a little area right there. So. Yep. I, I do have one question. Over the course of the years, it's always been $500. That's the maximum, by the way. Is that by state law? 
Okay. I believe that is the case acting by state law. So I believe that. Okay. Is it just a long petition? Just that some. I'll verify that, but yeah. I think in my past experience that was the max. Right. Okay. Uh, well, I'm not. I'm not questioning the max. I'm questioning. I think Southbridge put the five hundred on that. Yeah, I'll double check. But and it's so because this seems like the five hundred dollars has been that way. It could be. It could long. be under a buy. Revisit. Revisit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll, take a look at it. I'll take a look at it. Oh, any discussion from the floor? Seeing none, all in favor? Okay, number 10, review and discuss new code construction throughout the town. Uh, go to Rich for that. Go yeah, ahead. well, yeah, so Rich and I had extensive conversations the last couple of weeks about new code. Both of these topics, they kind of married in right. between the sidewalk repairs and new code. So um, Rich can elaborate on the things, the topics that we had. We did have um, conversations regarding the pole replacements uh, that National Grid has put in place. Uh, Rich was going to go out and look at those to make sure we uh, identify them. All I'd ask is if anybody has any that we might have missed, let us know. We will be in touch on uh, in regards to National Grid without liaison to follow up on uh, what the status is on the repairs on the National Grid pole sidewalk repairs. And Rich can update you on the NUCO repairs. Uh, so NUCO, National Grid, same thing. Uh, today after meeting with Jack, I took a drive out on my way back to the uh, DPW and looked at those two locations. So we're going to, as Jack stated, we're going to bring that up with our uh, liaison from National Grid. Most of the stuff that we've been dealing with more recently has been due to the gas work. Obviously the, the, the pole stuff is a different branch of National Grid, but the liaison that we have, she oversees both sides of it. So we'll go through her to, to see what we have to do to get those squared away. There's also one that I was just told about today was by the rotary. It was a pole there, I guess, and they put a new pole, and there's a concrete missing in this two by four area, maybe. Okay. Not even, it's just on the edge of the thing, but. On Main Street? Yeah, up by the, heading towards Morris Street. Is the rotary right in that that's area. That's a sidewalk. There. Sidewalk. Is there a way that we could possibly force NUCO or National Grid to pull a permit when they replace a pole so we have a better idea for the DPW when they're out instead of having to ride around and see what poles are? Is that a, such a thing we could create? I think that you'd run into one issue with that and that issue being that most pole replacement replacements are done in an emergency. So whether it be you know, a vehicular accident, a tree, tree down on the wire snaps the pole, you know, something like that. Or if they're doing work, they will then note if there's like sufficient deficiencies to telephone poles and put a work order in front of them to be replaced. They don't, they're, unless they come out with a larger like replacement project, they typically don't, um, there's not a lot of lead time in between replacing the pole, you know, uh, noticing the problem and replacing the pole in order to come to the town to do a permit for it. So. I just want to make your job a little bit easier instead of having to sending somebody out to look. But is there maybe we should have some kind of uh, notice from the police station when the pole's been broken to notify DPW? We, we could do that. Something like uh, that. We could also uh, include that as part of our our conversation with uh, the liaison from National Grid to see if there was uh, just a, a method of uh, communication that you know right. we could have back and forth. Jack and I discussed today about you know the, the fact that in the past there hasn't really been a lot of outreach from National Grid when it comes to some of these issues with restoration of roads and replacements of poles and sidewalks and so on and so forth. It was just kind of one of those things that just kind of flew through the night and if it landed we got lucky. Um, and, I, and I think that the, the stage is really set to change that now with the way that their, you know, their outreach program is working. So I, I think it's possible to include some of this stuff. And, and I just say, you know, yeah. Rich did have a meeting with National Grid to talk about restoration of some of the streets, um, especially like after they construct like Dresser Street and all that and other roads uh, to try to coordinate better as to uh, what they may be paying for for paving and coming up with a program that we might be able to coordinate. Uh, if Rich has anything further, you can elaborate on that. So. Were you satisfied with what you got from Nicole as far as an answer to, I know we got complaints of like uh, Central Street affecting business and those kind of things. Right. Uh, 
I know I talked to you one time about maybe that when they're doing core business work like that, that they come in after hours when the business is closed because right. Central Street was affected yes. daily. Yeah, I did notice that when they moved over to doing some of the service work, they, they kind of worked from you know the morning through like and, and ended by midday. Right. I think it was a little bit more difficult when they were working down the street a little bit further on both the distribution main and then for that um, uh, valve box that they put in the ground down there. Um, but yeah, I don't disagree, and I and I do think that you know following this year and next year with the the planned construction right. that's going to be in our core area, that's kind of going to put a lot of that to bed for quite some time. All right. Anything from the committee, John? No, thank you. Out there. Right. Okay. I guess we're uh, we're good. J just so well, you know, we. Oh, sorry, sir. Just so you know, you know, Rich and I have had conversations about the whole. Newco street repairs, how to move forward with them, how to coordinate with Newco. Also, we had some preliminary discussions today about some sidewalk repairs as well, and some existing sidewalk money um, that we I found a FY16 sidewalk money um, and some money for uh, the terrace, the Franklin Terrace, when we did the wall. So there's some left over money. So we'll look to see if we can bring some monies together to come up with something to do maybe late fall uh, during the fall when you can still do some sidewalk repairs but maybe get that sidewalk uh, bid out for fall and then have it available for the spring, spring. so that we're, yeah. we're, we're, we're prepared. Rich, uh, talking about telephone poles, they replaced one in front of the Honest Town Eats. As we look down Hamilton Street, they look at telephone pole every 40 feet um, and I know this is a bigger job than just removing poles. I think we have to look at it, Jack, on, on a bigger scale. I know that we talked about a restaurant district, one way, push the side. Well, take a look at those telephone poles as you go down there. There's nowhere in Southbridge where we have them so close together. Right. And they're right on the sidewalks. I mean, if there's a section of town that maybe we should go on the ground and go into Landon's mm -hmm. for uh, value to the core area, we might have to look at that. I know Peg probably would have to get involved. It's a bigger picture. I just want to throw it out there. How about the uh, Yakko? The gas station? Yeah. Uh, I did follow up because I had a meeting with uh, Mike this morning regarding that uh, matter. I did send an email to Yakko gas station. They responded late this afternoon uh, to promise me because I told them that it's been six weeks since they said that they were going to have the construction. Well, they, they had said that once the building permit was pulled, that they needed approximately four weeks for materials and set the schedule up and I said this you know you're over your four weeks you're about six weeks right now where are you at otherwise we're going to take further action and they responded right away saying that they would have a hard construction date uh, coming to me but that was followed up on today well, once that wall is done are we going to look to get rid of the old wall fire station or I know that's not part of this meeting but I will just right. say in regards to that I had a conversation with attorney Caprera uh, the other evening um, we got him asking him to research the D, D. requirements. So he's going to research. I, I just have to email him the copy of the D that we have. Mm -hmm. He's going to research it to get back to me to make Great. sure that we follow that. All right. Anything else on the DPW director? You could, Steve, you can bring something up if you want. Thank you, but I'm aware of that. Okay. <laughs> 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 I mean, so, um, so we're just looking forward to moving forward, get some things done. Mm -hmm. We have bids out there for, uh, well, well, we'll start getting the bids out, hopefully for River Crane and East Main Street in yes. a little bit. We're still working on the final details on that. So moving full steam ahead. Yeah. Well, East, I know. East Main's out to bid currently. I know. Um, East Main's yeah. currently out to bid. Yeah, I know Rich has kind of an open door policy to anybody that needs any information. So sometimes it's easier just to make a phone call and, He's usually very responsive in issues, especially when it's dealing with the public out there. So, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? All right.